we welcome you guys all to the church of all nations as we welcome you guys that are here in person and those that are online. You know, I want to bring a word of encouragement here and believe that God is going to do a great work here tonight and throughout the land. So we're going to talk about the Apostle Paul. And we're going to talk about a certain portion of scripture that he was talking about and Paul, when what Paul meant when he said, forgetting those things which are behind. Amen. See, the Apostle Paul challenged himself and all Christians to keep moving forward in this Christian walk of faith. If you have your Bibles, open them up with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. And the word of God begins to say, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I press towards forward the, the goal for the prize of the upward calling of Christ, in, of God in Jesus Christ. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, as we, Father God, prepare ourselves, God, to hear from you. Father, we ask, God, that you will be with us here tonight, God, as we read from your scriptures, God, we pray, Lord God, that you be God, to inhabit in the praises of your people. And God, we pray right now, God, that you will begin to remove me aside and you speak to each and every one of us, God, as we minister and bring forth your word, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that it's that it's an encouragement to our spirit, Lord God, and that we walk away changed in your presence. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 is what we're basing this scripture off of here tonight. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. That's where we're basing this off here tonight, that we got to begin to forget some things that are in our past, that are, caught, that are behind us here tonight. And as, as a result of doing that, Paul tells us to reach forward to those which lie ahead of us and to press forward to the goal for the prize in the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, when Paul said that he was forgetting those things which are behind, he was referring not looking back at past relationships, memories, failures, temptations, or anything that might distract from a single mind focus on the upward call of God in Christ. So what we got to do is we got to stop looking back. Because sometimes when we look back far enough and we start to reminisce, a lot of times we have a tendency to look at the things that don't bring encouragement into our lives. And a lot of it is past hurt, past failures. A lot of things in our past aren't necessarily good memories as well. So Paul was reassuring us that we shouldn't go constantly reminiscing and going back to these former things in our lives. But he was saying that we should not be distracted because we as a people here tonight, we got to be single-minded. That means we got to be focused here. Because if we lose focus now, we're going to not grasp hold of this change that God is placing before us, and we're not going to see the growth that God is expecting from us in this time that we call a new season. So he was trying to inspire his audience. Paul drew on an image of an athlete running a race with uncompromised determination to reach the finish line and to win the prize. 
So that's why we were talking about how pastor has determination in his spirit. Because we as Christians here tonight, we should have the same type of determination in our walk with God. We should be just like those pit bulls here tonight. That man, we were talking about how you give a pork chop to a pit bull, you are not able to easily take it back out of his mouth. Maybe not even a pork chop, maybe even just a piece of cheese. Because the simplicity of that is once it goes into its mouth, it's easily devoured, right? You never see a dog wondering, man, I wonder what that pork chop or that cheese had tasted like. He's constantly looking for something else to eat, constantly looking for that New. Amen. And that's what we got to be able to do here tonight. We got to stop looking back and we got to press forward. Just as he was saying that, you know, he was drawing this image of an athlete. See, as an athlete prepares for a competition, he subjects himself, herself to a place to where he wants to excel, she wants to excel, and to grow, to become the best athlete that they can become. As a runner prepares for a race, a runner does not get slothful, does not engage in food that is not necessary because, man, as a person in training, they begin to put their mindsets on, man, how can I make myself last in the midst of me running? Because as runners, they got to have the ability to go a certain amount of distance. And as you train, you can't give up halfway and say, oh, man, I didn't train hard enough. And say, man, I just want to slow down. See, Paul was saying that we got to de have determination in our spirit, that we got to be able to reach the finish line. When was the last time we actually ran a race where our goal was to get to that finish line at the very beginning? To run so hard and so fast that, man, you were willing to beat every opponent, even if it drew everything out of you. And that's what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about how we're in this battle here tonight, this spiritual warfare that's taking so much of our energy and our strength, but yet we still don't give in. We press in and we fight. And that's what Paul was referring to, that we got to be able to have uncompromised determination. That means we can't give up so easily when it feels like, man, we're not gaining ground. How many of us know here tonight, we know what it feels like when we're not gaining ground in our walk. As a hiker hikes, he sees the destination, but man, the obstacles keep him from getting to that place. And if we keep focusing on those obstacles that are placed before us, we're not going to reach our destination. Eventually, we'll either get tired and we'll stop. But that's where the training comes in. That's why we come to this place and we come together and we grow together and we begin to inspire ourselves. And how do we inspire ourselves? We inspire ourselves with the Word of God. And we begin to read Scriptures, just as Paul was giving us here, he was saying that we should run this race and we should get to this finish line so that we can win a prize. See, the New Living Translation renders this passage like this. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And I like the way, you know, both, you know, scriptures are spoken differently in different translations because it gives us more of an understanding whether we read it from the New King James or we, lead, or we read it from the New Living Translation. So in Philippians 3.13 that we just read, it says, 
brothers. I'm going to be reading out of the ES. I'll be jumping all over the place with translations to give us a better understanding. When we read it in the ESV, it says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. See, the word forgetting means dismissing from the mind or paying attention to. To forget in this way is to stop dwelling on something. See, that's a good definition by what the word was saying in forgetting. It was dismiss, dismissing from the mind or paying no attention to. See, there's a lot of things that get us to a place in our walk here tonight that, man, it gets us to a place where whether we stand still or we stop. But it's because we have a tendency to do just that to keep us from going forward. See, fear keeps us from going forward. Fear of the unknown, fear of being able to go into this new season gets us to either we slow down or we stop. And that's evident here tonight because people are struggling with this now in our walk. We're seeing this happening all over in the churches today. It becomes more stagnant when people become in a place where change has to take place. And this new season is beginning. Either people slow down or they stop. That's why there was a saying that we used to have back in the world. When you're in doubt, throttle out. That means step on the gas and punch it to the floor and hopefully you'll get out of that situation. Because now is the time that we got to put our foot to this pedal and we got to slam it to the floor and we got to hold on tight. Because now is not the time for us to wander. Now is the time for us not to doubt or disbelief in what's taking place. That we come to a standstill or we slow down. Because we got to understand there's a race that needs to be won. There's a finish line that we need to get to. There's a prize that's ahead of us that we need to embrace. But we got to stop dwelling on things that keep us from getting to this finish line. See, we might, we got to be able not to misstep or dwell on the mistakes along this course because the bible says that man the enemy would love to place things in our way obstacles as the word of god says because if obstacles in our way we either have the ability to hurdle over them go around them but sometimes obstacles were made to keep us from going forward so even on this walk that we find here, even though we're fighting, and even though we're pressing it, even though we're making ground, we're striving forward, the enemy's always going to be there trying to stop us. He's trying to move, stop the move of the hand of God upon our lives because he knows that when we get to this place where we're filled with determination in our life, that nothing's going to stop us. We need that type of a determination in our walk here tonight. We got to understand that nothing's going to keep us from getting to that place where God needs us to get to. No matter the cost, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how it feels that man, we may be alone in this fight and this struggle, but man, we got to be able to buckle down and to embrace everything that comes our way because God is calling us to be a great soldier in this race. And that's why he was saying that we got to be able to put our minds under subjection here tonight. Forgetting what is behind is Paul's way of saying, don't look back. Stop dwelling on the past. Don't let anything behind you interfere with your present progress or your future efforts. So church here tonight, we got to stop looking back and stop dwelling on the things in our past, things that have hurt us, 
things people might have said upon us, things that may have got us to a place where we come to a standstill. Because now is the time that we got to press forward. We got to go forward in the things of God. We can't be looking back on past victories anymore and expecting God to just take us from this place to another without us embracing this thing. We got to fight for what we want. We got to believe what we're talking about here tonight. It's not just hype. It's not just words to say to motivate people, but it's words to live by, words that we got to place within our spirit so that we do not get weak in our walk. Because now's the time. If there was ever a time for us to give up, if there was ever a time for us to go back to the way things used to be, I believe the enemy's using those references in our lives today. That's why we see people struggling to maintain themselves in this church, in ministry, in their walk with God. Because, man, the enemy's fighting tooth and nail to get us to a place where we begin to lose ground in this, in this race that we have before us. That's why it's always a struggle. That's why it's always a battle to want to serve God. Because we lose focus of the prize that's ahead of us. See, personal growth as a believer is a constant priority in Paul's life. See, he strained with every fiber of his being to keep moving forward to win the prize for which God has called him. And see, Paul was a great example because on his, on his road to Damascus, as he was beginning to, you know, come against the, the Christians of that time, he was saying, man, I'm going to go. If you give me the papers, I'll go to Damascus and I'll bind these people. I'll bind them up and I'll put them into captivity for saying that they know who and why they stand for Jesus. He went to persecute. He went to kill the people that once stood for righteousness. And on that road, man, God began to question Saul's life. And he began to stop him in the midst of everything that he was going through, his plan. See, the enemy will use people just like that to get you to a place where you give up and you give in. But in the midst of that, God was able to turn the situation around and he stopped Saul in the midst of him traveling with his companions and he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you coming against me? And it's amazing when someone begins to hear the voice of God, they begin to instantly change in God's presence. See, we got to lay down a little background for what's taking place here. So we look at why Paul is telling us to embrace this race. And he was telling them, man, why are you doing this? And he struck Saul with blindness so that he couldn't see. But he told him still to go to Damascus. And there was going to be someone there who's going to go and who's going to give you a word of encouragement. That's going to give you some words that's going to change your life around. And man, Paul went and he get to that place. And, you know, the word of God says that he spoke to another individual and he said, you're going to find this man, Saul, praying. And you're going to lay your hands upon him and he's going to receive sight. And from that moment, his life is going to be changed. But the man of God was so afraid because he knew what Saul stood for. He stood for everything that was against Christianity. He stood against everything that was Christ-centered. But still being obedient to the voice of God, he made himself present as he went and embraced Saul. And he prayed for him and instantly his life changed. He began to see and God changed his name. And see, that's why he was saying, I believe Paul was saying, you know what? I could easily look back at my past. 
I could easily look back at everything that I once stood for. I could easily look back and say, man, I persecuted the church. I killed Christians. I destroyed lives. So why can God use me? See, if Paul was that type of a person, he would have been constantly looking back and fighting and struggling with those thoughts. That he would have lost focus of the prize that was laid before him. It came to the point where Paul began to say, man, I want to just go and endure everything that Christ had to go through. Through his suffering, through his death, through everything. Because, man, the prize truly lies in heaven when we're both there. When I get to see my Savior, Jesus, face to face. See, that was an experience that Paul was looking forward to. And he was saying that, man, if I just run my race, if I do what is called upon me, that if I endure all of this and I run with endurance, if I don't look back, if I hold myself accountable and I press in and I fight for everything that God is calling me to do, one day I'm going to go before him and I'm going to rest in that heavenly place next to my Savior. See, that's the goal that we should have within us. That's why he was saying he strained with every fiber in his being to keep moving forward, to win the prize for which God has called him. See, Paul knew exactly what needed to take place in his life. Imagine if Paul was a, like a lot of church people here this, in this very day, wandering doubting, constantly looking back. See, the moment we started talking about this transition, the moment we started talking about this change, the struggle became real. Things in our lives began to come relevant again. Things began to come to our forefront, and we began to see who we really are. And we began to say, man, God, this is what's taking place. God was just already showing you already things that needed to change in your walk. That's where that personal conviction comes in. That's why we don't do the things that we used to do anymore. That's why it's a struggle nowadays to watch and to listen to what's going on in the world today. Because automatically it's the Holy Spirit within us telling us, hold up. And that's why we begin to question certain things and we begin to ask certain things within us. And all along, we never knew that's how we ended up speaking to God. A lot of people say, man, how do you speak to God? How do you just talk to God? It's in the midst of your personal conversations with yourself, in your mind, the thoughts that go on. The conversations that you have within yourselves about, do I do this or do I not? That's God in the midst of you changing. And as we got to this point in our lives when we unlocked that door and we put ourselves in a place where we said as a ministry, as a church, that we're going to go into a new season that we said, man, we're tired of going through the same things that we're going through. That, God, we need something to take place. And that's when God was saying, if we truly want to experience this deliverance, this breakthrough, this new season, we can't look back. We can't look back at how things were last year. We can't look back at how things were last week. We can't look back at how things were yesterday because all those things now have become the past and now that we're pressing forward, we're looking forward to the things of God. See, that's what Paul was talking about. In 1 Corinthians 9.25, he says, Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wealth, but we, but we, an unperishable. See, Paul compared an athlete's crown to a believer's eternal prize. Everyone 
who competes in the games go into strict training, right? All of us here tonight, all of us here in this church, all of us that are watching online, everybody of all this world, we have already been registered, got our numbered, and we are already in this race. And it's sad to say that, man, some of us, we find ourselves preparing for this race, thinking if I just do a 30-minute jog before I really start to embrace, I have enough energy to go to distance, right? As a boxer prepares for his match, you always got to prepare for the full 12 rounds, right? No matter how cocky you are, no matter how bad your, your stats are, your record, you still got to embrace this as a 12 round match willing to go the distance because every fighter will come across an opponent that would take him to the distance see for some people man they're quick to get in and they try to finish off the bout within the first four rounds but after the first four then that's when you really see the testing of your breathing of your endurance and your heart to see if you're willing to last round by round. And that's when we got to understand here tonight that we all are competing and that we need to go into strict training. See, they don't, they don't get a crown that they will not last, but we will do it to get a crown that will last forever, right? I was told that, man, when you win souls, God puts a jewel in your crown, right? That's a beautiful thing to think of, right? We love bling so much here on this earth. We should build that same thing up up in heaven as well. See, Paul kept his eyes trained on the finish line because his whole goal and purpose in life was just gaining Christ. That's all he wanted. He wanted everything about Jesus. He wanted to know him. He wanted to understand why he did what he did. He owed his life to Christ. See, some of us, we got to be like that. We got to come to this church and we got to say, God, We've been through some things in my walk. I shouldn't be here today. I don't have the ability to keep myself going in this condition, but it's by your grace I'm able to. So by that, God, man, I just want to do everything as it is unto you, God. My life is all for you, Christ. Everything that I want to do, God, is for you. Just as Paul was saying, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider it loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surprising worth of knowing Christ. That's amazing to say that nothing in this world compares to the love of Jesus. To the point that, man, nothing else matters. That's why when we play that, I love when that song comes on during worship. Because it's very true. Everything that we go through, everything that this life is about, it doesn't matter. All that truly matters is that, man, we should have a desire to love and to serve God. That's why the song says, man, God... Everything that you could do for me, I'd rather just say, I want you. And that's amazing. And the song begins to say, 
I don't want blessings, God. Because everything, God, has already been a blessing to this point. Because now I just want you. I just want to stay at your feet. I just want to be in your presence. I just want to be near you. And that was Paul's mind. That was Paul's way of thinking. That man, nothing in this world compared to that love that God had given him. God had given him a plan, a purpose, and he wanted to do that to the best of his ability because he loved Jesus with all his heart. Even going through persecution, even being thrown in jail, even being put on a death, right? He was ready to die. He was willing to give it all up because what did he say? To live is Christ, but to die is gain. It didn't matter to him if he lived today or died the next moment because his whole life was based on Jesus. That was a godly principle that, man, that we got to embrace here tonight. We got to understand that. And that's why he was saying all the things that he said. He says, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For those, for those sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Can you say that here tonight? Everything is garbage? That's hard to say, right? Philippians 3, verse 7, it says, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surprising worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain. See, when it comes to forward motion, our bodies tend to move automatically towards the place where our eyes are directed. Amen? Wherever you have your eyes focused on, that's the direction you're going to go. See, as a runner who runs... He who keeps turning back to see what's behind him will lose his race. We've seen that, right? We've seen enough TikTok videos. We've seen enough YouTube videos of people celebrating too fast and too early, right? They're close to the finish line, man. All they got to do is stay focused and just endure for that little foot that's ahead of them. To just break that line. But the moment they start to look back and start to get cocky. How many of you know when you get cocky in the spiritual realm, the enemy's waiting for you just to look so that he can sucker punch you. To trip you up so that you fall. And that's what Paul was talking about. He was saying that, man, we got to focus on the prize that's ahead of us. Because if we constantly look back and we constantly wonder, if we constantly have that what if, we're going to lose this battle. And we're going to have to start all over again. Just like that runner that gets cocky and he looks back, right? You've seen runners that are in forward progress and towards the end, they want to flip the script and say, I want to run through the finish line backwards. And that's always that one person that's there who's determined to press in. Who's determined to say, man, I'm not giving up. And what happens? They go past and they win the race. That could easily happen to any one of us here in this moment right now, we could get so cocky and we could say, man, we're on top of the world. Nothing can bring us down. But the moment we walk out of this place, something sparks our, our thoughts. And then we begin to reminisce on things in the past. And then we have a tendency to go back. Right? 
That's why it's hard not to listen to any type of music that's out there nowadays. Right? You could be watching a movie and, man, an old song could come up without thinking, man, you already heard the song 20,000 times. You know how the beat goes. You know the lyrics. You could be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, man, all it takes is just that little three seconds and already you're like, oh, man, I remember when I heard this. Right? And it's always not a pleasant memory, right? Because we got a lot of stories here tonight. I heard that song, man, and when I heard it, this was taking place. And, man, you're reminiscing on things that got you in trouble 20, 30 years ago. Thinking that you could still live that lifestyle and still have one foot in the church and one in the world. See how easy it is? That's why he said, don't look back. Why do you think God told Lot, hey, when I take you out of bondage, when I take you out of that destructive life that's there that you're in, don't look back. But what happened to his Ruka? She was so in love with Sodom and Gomorrah. She couldn't help. But wonder and think about, man, all the things that she had to go through, how she was living in that palace, how she was living so good. Just like some of us here tonight, man, we reminisce and say, man, man, I remember when I used to have this in my life. When it felt like this, when, man, everything seemed to be easy, but when I came to church, man, everything's full of regulations. So many can't do this, can't say this, can't do that. Right? But, man, the moment she looked back, the Bible says that she turned into a pillar of salt. And she became a monument for the people that were coming out of bondage. Not to look back. See, God is always making references of us not looking at the former things in our lives. Right? That's why it's hard. It's hard as Christians today, especially us that are reborn again, that once lived a sinful lifestyle. So I was listening to, a, you know, a pastor saying that, man, through all these things, through music, through the things that we see, there's certain frequencies that are produced that get us to a place where we constantly reminisce. And he was saying that even in the way the person wrote the lyrics, even the way the, way the music was produced, it was in their state of mind. So if they were sad and they were hurt and they were lonely and they make good, sad music, it makes you feel the way that they felt during that time they were writing it. So every time you hear Blue Moon, you know the words, you reminisce, and you go back. That's why people say, that's my jam. That's my song. Because, man, all those things hold memories. They hold a capsule in your mind that all it takes is a little bit of it to unlock it. And if the enemy can do that and if he can constantly keep things open in your mind, how many of you know, man, you start to slow down? Just like a computer you have so many apps open. You have so many things going. You think the computer is going to keep moving at its own pace? It's going to be trying to process everything that's running in the background. Right? When your phone starts to act up, you can go into the background and delete apps and your phone will start to work. And the same thing, your mind stores all these apps that you go through on a daily basis. You have a music app in your mind that you tap into every day of your life. You have the option to listen to something that's going to either excite you, motivate you, or make you aggressive and angry or sad and lonely. Right? 
Same thing, you have a movie app in your mind. All it takes is a little phrase, and already the movie's playing in your head. Right? We were talking about that the other, you know, a couple, a while back at work, and an individual had said a phrase from a movie, and automatically, man, I saw the movie from the very beginning to the very end. I knew every quote, every scene, everything that was taking place, and man, I could just recite the words like I was the one who wrote the movie. And it doesn't take much for us to unlock these things in our minds because it's made accessible because the enemy uses those things to keep us from going forward. And we think that we don't engage in this warfare. We think that, man, we're playing the sidelines and we're doing good. But all along, we're being puppets for this enemy to be used by. And we wonder why we struggle in our prayer. We struggle in our word. We struggle with everything pertaining to this walk. Because we're constantly looking back. The change is there. The transition is already there. We're already walking in it. We're on the verge of already breaking through this thing and saying, man, ta-da, new season. But we're constantly, am I the only one? Why does it feel like I'm the only one that wants change? Should I wait up for everybody to get here? But remember, once you start doing that, people are going to start passing you up. Embrace this. Go forward. It comes to forward motion. Our bodies tend to move automatically towards the place where our eyes are detected. A runner who keeps turning back to see what's behind him will lose his race. Understanding this phenomenon, Paul urged believers to stop looking back at the past and to stay focused on a future goal. Paul himself was determined to forget or to dismiss from his mind the former way of life when he violently persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. Galatians 1 13 for you have heard of my former life in Judaism how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it see he quit dwelling on the hindrances and the hurdles of persecution imprisonment and abandonment in his past we say that because in 2 Corinthians 4, it says in verse 8, we were, we were afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. But instead, he stretched forward what was ahead of him. He looked towards the heavens. The resurrection of his body and meeting his Savior face to face. Because why? He said that he wanted the citizenship of heaven. That's what we got to begin to do here. This point in our walk with God. We got to say, man, I'm going to press forward. I'm going to reach forward. And I'm going to look towards heaven. And I'm going to know that I'm going to be resurrected in this body. And I'm going to meet Jesus face to face. And see, we eagerly, eagerly await a Savior from here. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Amen? Amen? Philippians 3, 20 and 21, it says, but our citizenship is in heaven. 
And from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Amen? See, if we here tonight, we should have been excited for that portion of scripture right there. See, some of us, man, our bodies ain't up to a point right now. If we were to start running this race, man, some of us, man, we'd be struggling. Halfway out the door, we're already huffing and puffing. <gasps> but he says that, man, he's going to transform our body. So, man, we're going to go through some things in this walk with God. We put our bodies to the test when we were lost in this world. We played with grace to the point where we should be dead here tonight. But by the grace of God, we took it upon ourselves to say, man, God, I am so messed up. I need you in my life right now because everything I tried, everything that I've done hasn't worked for me. Man, I'm just miserable and horrible, God. Something needs to take change. So here I am. Amen. Right? And we ask God, God, come into my heart. Live within me, change my life so I'm no longer the person I used to be. No longer, God, do I want to be in this horrible state of mind. See, you shouldn't have to wait for someone to lead you into that prayer. You should be able to speak it out of your spirit because you desire change in your life. We shouldn't wait for pastor to come up here and say, well, do you want to get prayed for now? We should already say, man, pastor, bring on the oil. and Let's get it on. Because I'm in a state where my lowly body needs to be transformed by the power of God. I want to be a citizen of heaven. But that's not people's desires anymore. So how do things which are behind us hinder us in our progress and spiritual growth? Because we're in a season of growth. See, holding on to emotions like bitterness and unforgiveness can slow us down. And even keep us locked in the past. Right? How many of us have stories that, man, we've been hurt that we can't quite give up? We got some bitterness in our spirit that, man, we haven't quite truly given to God. Right? And it keeps us locked. You know why? Because we're rehearsing conflicts. Rehashing hurtful episodes will only open up old wounds. Right? Remember when you were a kid and you scraped your leg? And you didn't truly give it time to heal. You started picking at the scab. Even though you know you weren't fully done yet, you would rip it off. And what it would, it would do, it would start bleeding all over again. And that's what we do in our walk. Old things, old habits, old things that remind us. We go back to those old wounds and we rip the scab back off and we replay all those things in our minds because we quite haven't given it all to God. And we wonder why it feels like, man, we're not progressing in our walk. It feels like, man, we can't just get over situations so easily because, man, it's a hindrance in our walk. All these things. See, Peter urged us to be done with these things. He says, so get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all kind of unkind speech. And he says, like a newborn babes, you must crave spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. So he was saying, it's a cry out for this nourishment. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it says, 
So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit. Right? Be done with it. Jealousy and all unkind speech. Like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. See, when you go through all these things that's holding you back, we got to start crying out for nourishment. Guilt and despair over past sins may also keep us against us. And neither should we. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanse us from all sin if we say we have no sin we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us amen see we got to be careful here tonight see after God delivered Israel from the oppression of slavery The people look back longing for Egypt, but it got them nowhere. Numbers 11, 18, the word of God says, and say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow and you shall eat meat for you have wept In the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. Right? See, that's one of the struggles that we have. We're constantly saying that life was better in Egypt. When Egypt was there to oppress us and to enslave us. See, forgetting those things which are behind means throwing aside every weight that slows us down. Especially the sin that is so eagerly trips us up. And running with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who imitates and perfects our faith here tonight. That's in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. See, the Christian life is lived in our eyes, facing forward on Jesus. He's the ultimate priority that makes our lives worth living. We got to understand that. Our highest goal is to know him better. As Paul said, I want to know Christ. Yes, I To know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his suffering. Becoming like him in his death. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And may share his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death. So we got to understand as we embrace everything that God has been giving us, we got to know, we got to know, we got to know that we got to press in and run this race. We can't look back anymore. We can't say, man, things were better back then because they weren't. It might have felt that way, but man, honestly, it didn't work. Now we have a chance to make things right if we place our eyes looking forward and going and taking this race with strict training will receive the prize that's ahead of us. That prize, that beautiful crown in heaven when we get there. See, we struggle here on this earth every day of our lives. We go through some things in our lives every day that man keeps us from going forward it's because we constantly look back we look back at how things were 
We look back at how, man, we were hurt. We look back at how things were so miserable in our lives that we think that miserable is going to be waiting for us in the head of us. But we got to stop looking back. We got to look forward now. We can't say, man, we can't get through this anymore because it used to be like this. Church was always like this back then. But the Bible says that God is doing a new thing every day if we submit to God. So what do we got to do? We got to submit to God. Got to look forward. Stretch our hands and believe God that he's going to take us through these valleys, through these mountaintops, and that we're just going to give him praise through the whole thing because, man, we got a long ways to go. We're praying that, man, we have longevity for this future because we know why God has placed us here. So that we can give hope to the hopeless. That we can impart a word of encouragement to those that are hurting all over the world. Through this gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to pray that, man, God raises up more Pauls for these days. We need more people who are going to take on this role as a great leader for our people. That's where we come in. That's where God says, man, I'm going to put you through the crushing because I want to bring new wine out of you so that I can make you a new vessel that you can use. That's why it's amazing how God just separates people so that he can impart a word into their spirit so that they can run with it and take off and do great things with everything that God puts in their lives. So count it all joy. Like I was saying, man, it feels like, man, this, we're at that breaking point now. Now that we're at that threshold, it tends to get a little bit harder. It tends to get a little bit unbearable. It has a tendency to feel like, man, I don't know if I can do it. But press in. Don't look back. And fight. 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 Because, man, it's going to be great when we overcome this and we can say, man, we did it. We endured. Now we're ready for this new fight. Because, man, life here is just one consistent battle. You get through this one, God's going to restore us, build us up, give us more strength. So when the next one comes, we are able to go through it again. We go through it again and we keep pressing in and we fight. Because one day when all this fighting is done, we'll get to rest and we'll get to say, man, God, I love the fact that you put me through all of this so that I can be able to see you face to face. Amen. Every head bowed and eyes closed.